Hello! In the previous video, I talked about how I changed and balanced the game mechanics of Santa's Atlas to make it into a decent RPG. But this wasn't enough. It also needed playtesting and feedback from others. Yeah, Casper shit though. With RPG games, this is more important than with other genres since it's infamously difficult to get into and tends to have a steep learning curve. Thanks to advances in technology, I was able to watch playtesters stream their experience for hours as they got to grips with the game for the first time. I grew frustrated as they missed obvious clues and cheered as they beat harder enemies and slowly grew to love the game. You can often spot the exact moment where it clicks for them, where they finally piece together enough about how the game works to be able to see the bigger picture. Oh, oh, already leveling up. Ooh. It could be when they've leveled up enough to take on a harder enemy, or bought a weapon that transforms one of their characters from a weakling into a battle-hardened badass. Now I just freeze them with my ice. But the moment that stage is reached, everything changes. This ice baby. They take control of the experience. They begin setting goals, like getting to a certain level, or saving enough money to buy a powerful item. This is better than CSGO. Oh, oh. They love discovering that fire works better against some enemies than others, or cheating death by healing just in time. These elements are what make RPGs more rewarding than button-mashing combat games, and it's thanks to the balancing that I did in the previous video in this series that makes the long-term gameplay of this game so rewarding. If I had unlimited time, I'd watch them play through until they complete the game, but I needn't fear about them giving up once they get hooked. Sure, they might struggle with certain enemies or bosses, but they'll also proudly explain how they overcame the problem by adopting a different strategy or from grinding for a while. If anything, the challenges make it even more rewarding for them once they finally beat it. They were feeling the Santa's Atlas spirit, and I suspect would have played the game to completion, even if it took 20 hours to do. But it doesn't. The real challenge is getting people through the first 20 minutes. I suspect that 95% of people who start the game will fail within this time. Unlike the RPG veterans, they won't see it as a challenge to overcome. They'll decide that it's not worth it and will quit the game, never to return. So it's up to me to make the first part of the game as easy to get through as possible. I started with the first battle, which was hard enough to kill some of the characters. I gave the first maggot you fight half the amount of HP and made it so that both of your characters can attack the moment the battle begins. You'd really have to try to fail in this fight. Simply clicking attack 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 is enough to win, though hopefully players will also discover the heal and black magic attack, which is intentionally overpowered to begin with to compensate for the limited uses due to your low amount of MP. I had to make the weakest weapons and enemies pointless. The first enemies are intentionally meant to be a challenge if you have the starter weapons, but new players were finding it too hard, so instead I gave Santa a decent sword and Casper a bow, both of which are better than starter weapons, and made the starter MAGA enemy easy enough to be beaten even at level 1. This gives new players some time to learn the game mechanics before finding the enemies challenging. The discoveries are less about how do I inflict damage and more about why does one character do more damage and take less than the other. This at least let everybody beat the first few enemies, or at least I thought it would. One playtester chose to retreat from every battle before getting killed in one hit by the first boss. I disabled retreat for the first fight to make sure that you had to kill it and level up before you could start the game properly, which I think is rewarding for the players as well. I even had to make the second enemy type you encounter, the rat, easier than I would have liked as well. It still rewards you with large amounts of experience and money, making the first bit of the game super easy to conquer just so that new players aren't scared off by the challenge. Anybody who has beaten the game in its original harder state will call these changes dumbing down, but it's so important to make new players feel powerful. That way, they invest enough time into the game to learn how to play. After the first 20 minutes, they've developed the characters enough to want to overcome challenges rather than just to give up and to quit. I can then up the difficulty and they feel committed to beating the game. It turns out that by the time players reach the window boss in Santa's Atlas, they're ready for that challenge. The third enemy type is a wasp and is a lot harder than anything players had to face before, but nobody complained that it was too difficult. It does, however, poison players, making them lose health in future battles unless they use an antidote or cleanse spell. This wasn't a problem for me since I knew how to get the cleanse spell, but new players had to use antidotes and were quickly run out of them since they weren't able to get any more since the first island doesn't sell them. I quickly corrected this error and made cleanse a spell that you start with. It's one thing to get poisoned, it's another thing not to be able to cure it. I made some exciting discoveries that will really help me in future RPGs that I work on. The amount of health you gain per level really matters. If it's too little then levelling up isn't as rewarding as it should be. But on the other hand, if you get too much, then you end up in a situation like Borderlands, where enemies are impossible one minute, and then too easy the next. 
difficulty jumps between areas had to be big in this game since we didn't make many enemy types, so each would have to challenge the player to improve both their stats and equipment if they are to stand a chance against the bosses. Oh yeah, bosses. What are they good for? I used to think that they were to be a challenge. Compared with lots of easy battles slowly eating away at your health and MP, bosses are a single fight that is difficult in other ways. But now I know that they're there for your own good. In one bit of Santa's Atnas, for example, you steal a boat and crash it into the next island where the enemies are a lot harder. Imagine that you had struggled through that previous area. You're now screwed, so you have no chance of beating normal enemies and therefore no way to improve and to get more money. If you saved after crashing that boat, you can't complete the game and your save is ruined. This is particularly bad for RPGs where it's common to invest a lot of time and effort into them. Bosses stopping you from entering a new area act as a way of preventing this from happening by ensuring that the players are up to a certain standard before confronting standard enemies of a higher level. The other problem that people had was knowing where to go and what items did. There are probably tidier solutions, but I just typed a load of explanations and put them on the screen. I made it so that you could see the enemy's health and battle timer. This is something that Final Fantasy games have never done, but the feedback it gives you really hammers home how effective your weapons are and how much attacks such as Wound and Slow affect the enemy's battle speed, giving you the advantage. I extended this to the world map. It always tells you what sort of enemies you could face in your current location. It takes away a bit of the mystery, but helps the game to become more accessible. The hardest part for me was telling players where to go. I mean, during cutscenes the characters literally explain what exactly they have to do but playtesters grew bored of these bits and wanted to make them skippable. I did this, and then they moaned that they didn't know where to go because they didn't bother listening. For that part, now we need to collect. So I stooped lower and made it always explain exactly where to go at the bottom of the screen. And people still got confused. So I made it even simpler, even advising people on what sort of level or equipment they should have before advancing to the next area. I made this advice less useful as the game progressed to encourage players to explore, but it seems that for the first half hour of gameplay, you need to lead people by the hand every step of the way. I don't regret it though. It's nice to know what needs to be done, rather than releasing a game and not knowing that everybody gave up within the first five minutes. And that's how I transformed Santa's Atnas from an unplayable RPG to one where most people will possibly play it for a bit. The end boss is hard. Very hard. You can probably just about do it by training against the trees, but the Spartan Island in the north lets you get XP, money and the ultimate weapons that will make the job easier. In conclusion, I'm pleased that the skid mark that was Santa's Atnas has been transformed into one of the most enjoyable and complex games that I've ever worked on. Give it a go in its new state. Redesigning it has taught me a lot and has got me into the mood for making a new RPG that's bigger, better and buggier than ever before. Santa. I've been observing the mountain in much depth. It seems Atmos was the one behind the lack of snow. What kind of sicker would do such a thing? Santa, do you see that? It's some kind of boot. Let's steal it. <laughs>